All right, moving rearward, we have the flat underbody. Most of the panel, no, actually all the panels were made with six millimeter Alumalite. Um, the fenders, which we'll consider underbody, sure, are made with um, just some sheet aluminum, 3003, um, 40 thou sheet aluminum, and that's basically used to, to control airflow through the fenders and to aid in evacuating the the front diffusers also reduces drag in the rear um, the the underbody panels were basically fastened to the car through sheet metal brackets or existing holes which pretty much are all the underbody um, and then we used um, some thin or custom machine bungs about 50 millimeter OD and then they're specifically designed so that they don't crush the alumilite with the six millimeter boss right here, uh, which fit really nicely into the sheet of alumilite, and then give it a really low profile so that you don't get a large uh, drag issue. Uh, everything was designed for M6 flathead cap screws, which are readily available. And yeah, what what's the underbody produce, Paul? 497 pounds. So 497 pounds. So basically at, 500 pounds at, at 120, 120. Yep. at 120 miles per hour. And that's basically due to the car having a uh, rake. So that is, it's a very large area if you think about it. And then it cr produces uh, a very low pressure or a very small low pressure, which then generates a large force overall because it's so large. Yeah, and what that's considered, it's basically what I have the floor marked off is basically from here all the way back to the diffuser. So I have the diffuser actively as part of the floor too, uh, mainly because we knew we were gonna mount the full thing together and we weren't gonna do a whole lot of changing. Like I, I adjusted the angle of attack on the rear diffuser a few times just to figure out exactly where it likes it on this car overall, but um, have the floor all as one full piece. So that would be 500 pounds, including the diffuser and the floor at 120. There you go. And then for the rear, for sheet metal, we had to cut a significant portion of the trunk to get our rear fenders to look like this. Uh, we, we also discarded quite a bit of the ML24 kit, but this is ultimately what we ended up with to produce the downforce and drag that our car, well, Jeremy's car, produces, which we helped make. All right, now we're looking at CFD of the underbody of the car. We are focusing, though, on the actual underbody and the rear diffuser, not really talking about the splitter since that was on a, another video. So what you can see on here is you can see a lot that's going on. If you look at, so we're looking at pressure coefficient which basically is a way to look at pressure. The blue is low pressure, red is high pressure, and then at zero, there's really no color. So you can, it's a good way to kind of see what's going on. Now, if you look at where, the, where you can really start seeing the diffuser, you see that dark blue line, that would be called the throat of the diffuser. That's where you're gonna have your lowest pressure and be the suction point in essence of the diffuser. All right, you can also see on the strakes you can see um, different shades of blue on the actual strakes that's because some of the strakes are seeing more pressure than others um, just off the flow from the underbody you can see it on the very inside it'd be the inner left strake you can see a much lower pressure on there now if we look in front of the rear tires you can see that it is not as low of pressure. That is because it's interacting with the rear tires. All right, now in this image, you can see a lot more of the backside of the diffuser. You can see on the second turn up, which is a big radius. We have this on all of our um, kind of off the shelf diffusers. We found this works really well. What it does is it's a dramatic turn up with a radius. And what it does is it creates a second suction point on the back side of the diffuser to help pull more air through and get more downforce. And you can see that interact in the back with that dark blue line. 
you can also see the inside strike now more where it's seeing much lower pressure and that has to do because of the suction peak of the diffuser itself. The circles you see on the underbody, that is on the car of where their hydraulic or no, their, their pneumatic lift is set up where it lifts the car up. So that's what those are representing. Now this is a picture. This is the exact same setup. This is just a top and a bottom view on the same picture. So you can kind of visualize more of what's going on. You can see the entire underbody and the entire top side of the car. You can see where the wing's located, basically everything. This has a very good view of the underbody because it's flat. You can see everything that's going on. You can see what I was talking about earlier with the, it's not as low pressure by the rear tires. That's because the interaction is of the tire and the air. The lowest pressure of that section is in the center. It's kind of hard to tell, but that's because you're getting the most flow in those areas. You can see on the throat of the rear diffuser, what I was saying earlier, that low pressure. You can see it's the lowest in the center because it has the cleanest air. It's less, it's less interaction with the uh, tires than the more outside. You can see that shade of blue on the throat is getting lighter and it's a thinner dark blue line as it moves outward. You can also tell on the trailing edge um, next to the strakes is where you're gonna have that highest peak pressure. It's the cleanest flow. You have a vortex running down there which creates a nice suction point and you can kind of see what's more going on on that. Um, overall, the underbody is fairly simple so there's not really a whole lot to go over. One thing I'll mention though is Having a good underbody and rear diffuser helps the front splitter, and having a good front splitter helps the underbody and rear diffuser. They work all together, um, so you kind of need to design them so they work together in unison and work nicely together. That's it. Thank you. Bye.